Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Blake and we're beginning our study of the book of Joshua with chapter 1. Before you watch this video, I'd encourage you in each individual video after this to go and read the chapter first and uh, we'll give you some more resources as well. Um, before you start reading Joshua 1 um, or reviewing this video, I'd also encourage you to go back and read Deuteronomy 34. Just read the chapter. It talks about uh, you know Moses' death and the the kind of the giving over of this of the uh, leadership to Joshua. Also, Numbers chapter twenty, verses two through thirteen, or just Numbers chapter twenty in general. Uh, this is why Moses was not allowed to enter the Promised Land. Okay, Joshua had to take over because no Moses actually did something that he was not supposed to. Uh, he struck a rock out of anger when he was supposed to speak to it. But you can read the entire account. Also, Deuteronomy 3, verses 23 through 29 is whenever um, God actually tells him, you know, you're forbidden to enter and cross into the Jordan. And also Deuteronomy 31, verses 1 through 8. It's actually when Joshua is given over the mantle and Moses lays his hand on him and given him the mantle. I'll put all of those references down in the uh, descriptions, and so you'll be able to uh, see that again below the video, okay? But um, in Joshua 1, we have a guy that really uh, had a lot that he was taking over. Um, the people of Israel had just got through the kind of their 40 years of going through the desert, uh, wandering around, and um, they were been setting at the base of the uh, Jordan River for around 30 days. Moses uh, just died, and uh, for 30 days they set and uh, they just wept for him. Uh, he was their leader for a long time. It does talk about how you know there was not a prophet, uh, nor none like Moses ever. All right, well, you can actually skip back a page, and uh, you'll be in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 34. Four. We'll just read a little bit. It says, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and, um, and I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes. This is a God talking to Moses. I will let you see it with your eye, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he was and he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But he, no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor abated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plain of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses had ended. In verse 9, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there was not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, while the Lord knew uh, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and the wonders the Lord had sent him to do in the land of Egypt, but to Pharaoh and to all of his servants and to all this land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. And you skip over a page, now we're in Joshua. So Joshua is taking up the mantle of one of the greatest prophets to ever know. And, uh, and to ever and to ever live and so but Joshua was also taking over this land over this job knowing that these people had rebelled against God and they had complained and they had been driven around the desert and other other than him and Caleb uh, no one else was even able to enter the land that had kind of came out of Egypt so there was like this new brand new people so luckily for Joshua he was starting off with those people he was starting off with kind of a newer group of people. Uh, to lead, but he had a very big job to do. However, Joshua was known for being the one when all the spies came back that Moses had sent out to look at the land and stuff. Uh, Joshua was the first one to say, we can take these guys. It's not too big. Are you kidding me? And so uh, Joshua was a pretty cool guy. He was a, a guy ready for the task. He was a guy that was wanting to please God and wanting to get the people over the Jordan into the promised land so that they could possess it and they could take this land for their people. And so we start off in First in Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore go, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. And so right away, now this is a good sign though, Something we kind of skip over is consider God is starting to speak to Joshua. You know, in the Old Testament, there wasn't like these 
plethora of people that the Lord was speaking to. He, he spoke to kind of individuals at one time, and those individuals kind of led the, the other groups of people. That's like the prophets, and then the judges kind of were, were in that same idea, and then kind of the kings through like David and stuff. And so we see that Joshua has taken over a very big mantle. This is a very big deal. He is like the voice of God to the entire people group of Israel, okay? And so this is a lot of just channeling in just this just, just God's will into uh mankind through Joshua. So this is a very big deal. And but luckily, whenever the succeeding happened from Moses to Joshua, immediately God starts talking. Moses, my your my servant is dead. I you need to go arise and take the people over the Jordan. And so it's awesome that Joshua had this. And it would have been confirmation. Hey, yeah, this work, the mantle shifting, the leadership, God has accepted it. Uh, it he has blessed it because now he has told me, hey, you now take the people. Moses is dead, but you take the people and you go across the Jordan and you possess the land. So this would have been great for Joshua to know that simply God was even speaking to him at all because he knew that definitely he was the leadership now of Israel. And so, uh, very big, very big deal. And, uh, you know, and then uh, God gives Joshua the command to take people across the Jordan in verse 2. You know, he told Moses he was not going to do it. He let Moses finish out his days. Uh, God actually, it seemed like he buried him almost himself, but uh, we don't know where he was buried, obviously. But um, Moses had died, and then now it's like that new commission. Hey, now. I want you to take them over the Jordan. And so everywhere they would go, the Lord had already given them. In verses 3 through 4, Kind of they, uh, he reiterates that. Look, everywhere you go, I have given you. You already are in possession of this land. You just have to go take it. And then in verses 5 and 7, you see uh, God will help them in taking over the other people of the area. He still loves his people and will be there for them. They need to be strong and courageous. He kept on saying that. However, now look at that in 7. However, they they will still needed to follow the law of Moses. And that was why they actually did not uh, get into the promised land earlier because they kept on rebelling against God. They kept on complaining that, oh, wow, you got us out of Egypt, but yet you're going to make us starve in the desert. You got us out of Egypt. We could have been slaves and had something to drink. Now we're going to thirst out in the desert. But God provided for them every time. But because of that, they stepped out of the will. They stepped out. The God wanted uh, this that old generation to, to, to stay out of the promised land and this new generation take the promised land. However, he reiterates what he told them uh, at the very beginning in verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. That you may have good success. We know that, um, I mean, even... On You may know some of the story of Joshua that we'll get into, but uh, there is a few times where a few of the people in his own camp did not do what the Lord God had commanded them to. And so Joshua dealed with that, but he was reiterating, look, only if you follow the law of Moses will I be with you and will I help you do this. If you step out of line, you'll be stepping away from my will. And hey, I will let everything happen that will happen to you. And so that's what we see Joshua having to put up with. But he's reiterating this. He's retelling the people. God's telling him. And so they're going to hopefully get off on a better foot this time. And then in verse 8, it says, If they follow the law of God, then their way will be made prosperous. Only then will they have good success. We see at verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. And verse 9, I have not commanded you, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Reiterating it over and over again, Lord of God is with them, but they do have to follow the Lord. They have to do his commandments. They have to be led by him and him alone. And uh, so, but they could take comfort in knowing that God was with them. The God could have said, you know what, guys, I, you know what, just you do whatever you want. He could have done that. He could, Jesus he could have done that with us. We messed up. He said, you know what, I don't care. You go do your own thing. Obviously, you want to do it anyway, so you're good. 
However, God so loves us that he sent his son into the world. He loves his people. He loves mankind, the people that he made uh, to be with him and us with him and him with us. And so he did that and he strives with us. He gives us time and time and time again to get the things right. It, and luckily, we can't live up to that expectation, but we have Jesus that we are now, you know, we have been freed from that sin. We can know, we can say no to sin now. We have the ability to do that. We have the ability to conquer through Jesus Christ. And uh, you may not be perfect. That's not saying that you'll ever be perfect, but you can go better every single day. That's what sanctification is, is getting this, this going from that glory to glory to glory every day, being a part of this life and, and, and being uh, transformed and uh, changed by the gospel every single day. And that's one of the reasons why he's talking about, look, meditate on this day and night, just like we should. Look, if you're not reading your Bible every day, if you're not praying every day, look, you are missing Christianity, okay? You're missing the gospel because the gospel is able to change us and mold us, shape us into the people that we are supposed to be. And so, but if you don't get it in you, it can't get out of you. And so soak in that word, have a prayer time with the Lord. Look, driving in your car, doing whatever you do, do the house chores, going, walking down the street, whatever. Worship and pray and seek him. The God will show up and he will help show, slowly change you into the man and the woman you're supposed to be. So now, with that being said, Joshua was basically given a commandment from the Lord. Hey, now you can go and possess the land. You can go cross the land. You can go possess it. And then he told all of his people to do the same thing. Now, what's odd is that all of a sudden the narrative seems to change. And it changes for a very good reason, for a specific reason. However, most people don't know the references, okay? The people groups in verses 10... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, in verses 12, actually. Um, he did tell after that in verses 10... And 11, Joshua told uh, his officers, hey, go tell all the people in three days, we're moving out. We are passing over the Jordan to get your stuff ready. It was a lot of people. It was a lot of things they had to get ready. So he said, in three days, we're moving out. And then, I'm sorry, now in verse 12 through the rest of it, he's talking to uh, three different kind of groups of people that were with him. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and then the half-tribe of Manasseh. Now, these people uh, were actually... It makes sense within the context, if you want to read uh, Numbers chapter 32, we'll explain this completely, and I'll put this down in the description as well. Numbers chapter 32 will explain verses 12 through 18, okay? But we're going to go through it. Uh, these people, before they got to the Jordan, uh, you know, several chapters ago, uh, before they got to the Jordan, these people are cattle people, sheep people, and where they were up against the mountains, kind of where they were, was ideal prime spots for raising cattle and sheep. Now, we think that it could have been for uh, several different reasons. Um, this was kind of in a valley-ish area where they were passing through, so it could have been because it was very fertile, and so their sheep and their um, livestock were able to... Um, uh, to grow and to be, you know, to, uh, it was just great pasture land. And so they wanted to stay there. Now, Moses did not like this idea initially. However, they did state, look, we will continue to help you fight through and take over the promised land. But after we've taken the promised land, just let us be free. And then we'll go back to this land that is really great for these sheep and these cattle. And we'll stay over here and y'all can have the rest of the promised land to yourself. And so there was a deal made, and that was okay. Basically, that's Numbers 32. But I encourage you to go back and read it. And so, in verses 12, it says, And the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, uh, Joshua said, Remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. Your wives and your little ones and your livestock shall remain in this land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But all the men of valor among you shall pass over armed before your brothers and you shall help them until the Lord gives you the rest of your brothers as he has to you. And they also take possession of the land that the Lord your God is given them. Then you shall return to your land 
of your possession and shall possess it and the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord God, gave you beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. So basically what we just talked about. Uh, he was just reminding them, hey guys, now I know we're about to pass over the Jordan, but you remember you promised, the Reubenites, Gadites, half-tribe Manasseh, you promised that you were going to come and help us do this. Is it still good? Are you still, you, do you realize that? You still realize that you're going to do that? And basically uh, the rest of the chapter in verses 16 through 18, uh, they said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We remember that. Uh, we're going to help you. And then they give even uh, Joshua some extra help at the very end of it. Let's read it in 16 through 18. And they answered Joshua, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And whenever you send us, wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your word, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Now, what's funny is that uh, it's good that they're going to continue this. But one thing they said uh, in verse 17, just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. That had to kind of throw off Joshua a little bit because they, I mean, these people were not the best people. They actually did disobey Moses several times and they complained and stuff. So, I mean, even though, yes, they were going to help him, it would be like, well, maybe you could do better this time. <laughs> And so, um, but uh, they did, were gonna, they were going to fulfill their promises. Uh, they were completely fine with that. Uh, but Joshua, as a good leader, he made sure, he checked in. Hey, guys, uh, you made this promise to the last leader. Could you still do this? Are you still good for this? Are you still going to carry this over? And they were. And so they decided to help him with that. And uh, they did um, honor their word. And they even went on to say, you know, in 18, whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your word, whatever you command him, shall be put to death. So these guys were even going to help uh, Joshua um, say, hey, look, if, if anyone starts rebelling against you, we'll take care of them for you, Joshua, uh, because that's how much. We already have our land. We want all of the rest of our brothers and sisters, all the rest of the tribes of Israel to be able to have their land as well. And so, and we'll take care of people that are going against you. And so a lot to unpack in the first chapter. Uh, it's a great short chapter, but um, Joshua really is establishing his leadership. It gets his officers, hey, everyone, in three days we're going to move out. Get your stuff ready. Hey, you guys, are you still with us? Are you going to cross over, help us? Yes, okay, good. And so Joshua is getting ready to be able to cross over that Jordan. Now, he's not just going to do it just yet, but within the next three days he does. And in chapter 2, we see the whole entire Rahab and the spies being sent out. So just as Moses sent him out at one point as a spy, him and uh, Caleb, uh, to go out and to be spies to spy out certain lands, he is also going to do the same thing. It worked for him, uh, for Moses, and then so he's going to do the same thing. He's going to send out spies uh, to check out the land before they go to see, okay, what, what, what do we expect? What should we expect? And so uh, I encourage you to go back and read Numbers 32, Deuteronomy 31, uh, 1 through 8, Deuteronomy 3, 23 through 29, Numbers 22 through 13, Deuteronomy, and just entirely 34. Uh, I'll put those down in the description, uh, but I, I encourage you to, to be a part of this uh, journey through Joshua. Joshua was a truly great man. He had a lot of things uh, that happened to him, uh, lots of very short stories, a lot of stories that most people don't realize that was Joshua doing those things. Sun standing still, you remember that story? That's in the book of Joshua. Um, all of those uh, those uh, battle after battle after battle after battle, uh, he was manipulated. He was actually um, kind of tricked into uh, not taking over a land and kind of making an oath with people, and and uh, and they, they they accidentally tricked him. And so he's learning through his leadership, and we see him the fall of Jericho. Jericho, the marching around the Jericho, that was Joshua. So I encourage you week by week, we're going to be reading chapter by chapter. And so uh, read it before each of the uh, videos and uh, we will go on. So join me next Wednesday for chapter two. Have a good day.